Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And welcome to worship on this day as we continue to explore how joy can be found in each and every season of our life. And today we're going to encounter the disciples as they encounter the risen Christ. And as they encounter Christ, there is fear and there is doubt. So how do you find joy in fear and doubt? Christ in our midst comes and declares his presence. And so we hope the presence of God may be with you on this day. And again, welcome to worship. this call to worship. We gather today to worship. We gather today to give praise to God because God is our God, a God of joy, a God of laughter, a God of sorrow, and a God of despair. We worship this morning in great joy. We confess together and even bring our doubts before God. We worship this morning to profess our great love for our God and to confess our sins to, to our God who is forgiving. So come, let us worship God. Come, let us give God our thanks and praise. Come, let us give God our whole selves. Come as you are, beloved child of God. Our reading today comes from Luke 24. Jesus appears to his disciples. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you afraid? And why do your doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. 
For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I love this story from Luke, this resurrection story where we encounter Christ and the disciples encounter Christ as well. I think what I love about Luke's text and the verses that we read today is that it shares these words with us, these words that describe the disciple while in their joy, they were disbelieving. There is Christ in their midst. And we are told that while there was joy at seeing and experiencing and being in the presence of the risen Christ, there was a disbelief. I think it's an actual human response, is it not? And Luke captures it so eloquently, this startled surprise at this presence before them. And as they receive, and as they receive Christ in this unprecedented good news, I can only imagine that in that space in which the disciples were, that everything stood still. It slowed down, and the, the world started to spin underneath their feet, and their whole idea of what it meant to be alive and what it meant to be dead, the whole world was suddenly turned upside down. Maybe I like this text too, because when I was younger, I loved to look at the world upside down. When I was around four years old, I discovered that I had a talent for standing on my head. And I stood on my head at every opportunity I could find. As I was learning to stand on my head unaided, there was these foot marks about four foot high on all up and down our hallway where I had been trying to stand on my head and pushing my feet out to support myself and then trying again. Well, I got so good at it that I began to watch TV on my head. I talked on the phone on my head. I read on my head. I would be there in the middle of the living room with my feet straight up in the air, standing on my head. I did it so often, actually, that I got a bald spot for a little while from the friction of my head against the carpet. Maybe that's why I love something that I'm gonna to read to you here from Barbara Brown Taylor. And this is a blessing that she has that she wrote for actually last week's text for the blessing on the Beatitudes. It says, there is a blessing also for the upside down. And this is Barbara Brown Taylor writing. When I was little, I used to like standing on my head I was short then. Just about everything in the world was taller than I was. Taller and very boring. But by standing on my head, I could liven things up a little. Grass hung in front of my eyes like green fringe. Trees grew down, not up. And the sky was a blue lawn that went on forever. I liked standing on my head because it made me see old things in a new way. I liked it because it made life seem exciting and unpredictable. In a world where tree grows down and houses might fall up, anything seemed possible. I read this today because that's exactly what Christ is doing as he enters into that room, as he enters into the room and the world as the resurrected Christ. He is turning the world upside down where things all of a sudden start to look different, where life actually begins to happen differently, where relationships are built differently. Because once Christ enters into the world again as our resurrected Lord, we now live in a world where the dead are raised, where sins are forgiven, where fear gives way to hope. This is a different world that we find ourselves in. So, it's not crazy to imagine that the disciples are feeling a bit unsteady on their feet. 
we have really no recording of those private conversations that must have happened. There probably was a lot of head shaking, sitting down, taking time to catch their breath, to garner in the scene that was before them. But if we were to be in those disciples' shoes, this is really what the true story of a resurrected Lord does to us. It rocks us from the safety of a world where death means death, where instead we have that with the promise of death, we are given the promise of a new way of new life. In all of these post-resurrection stories, one of the characters that always strikes me is Thomas. Poor Thomas. Ever since he asked Christ if he himself could touch the wounds on his body, he's always been dubbed Thomas the Doubter. Pastor and preacher David Lowe's explains this, that Thomas wasn't a doubter. Nope. Thomas was a realist. Thomas had his feet firmly on the ground and he was living in the world that he had always lived in. And in Thomas's world, Jesus had died. This was real. Jesus had been star struck with a sword. That was real. For Thomas, with his feet firmly on the ground, Jesus had been taken down from the cross and lowered in a tomb. That was reality. So when he stood among them, no wonder why. The reaction of the disciples was joy, yes, but lots of unbelief. And you think of all of those experiences after the tomb was cracked open. Matthew has the two Marys appearing to the angel of the Lord, and, and the angel says to them, do not be afraid. He's gone ahead of you to Galilee. In Mark, the women are told, don't be alarmed. And in John, Peter and John appears, and Peter and John arrive on the scene. There's commotion, there's joy, but there is disbelief. I think that's an honest reaction to experiencing a resurrected Christ. Joy in the promise a disbelief and an unending sense that the world has shifted underneath our feet. The world has shifted underneath our feet ever since that first Easter morn. But imagine what the joy is like when we realize, as Peter Gomes says, that by removing the fear of death, for the first time Christ has given us true possession of our very life. And notice, as Christ enters into the space where the disciples are, he says to them, peace be with you. The world may feel really rocky right now, but peace be with you. There may be joy in this moment, but there's also disbelief, so peace be with you. Jesus walks into that room and says to those who are uncertain, peace be with you. He takes the doubters and those who forgot his name, who forgot to declare his name and says, peace be with you. I think we need the resurrection, even more so in these days and in these months and in these years that we have had in the past. We too need to enter into the room and see the resurrected Christ. Yes, the world has been turned upside down. The world has been turned upside down from where it was two weeks ago, a month ago, four months ago, a year ago. And we may feel a little bit unsteady. But Christ comes in into the chaos, into the confusion and says, peace be with you. So may we find ourselves maybe a bit off balance, but standing on holy ground, standing with Christ our Lord on the ground of Christ's blessing, on the ground of true joy. And may we be a part of a world that is turning on its head so that we too may proclaim new life, new hope, and a great and tremendous joy with a God who enters in. 
again and again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us turn our hearts and our minds now to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving Christ, you call us to be faithful people, yet you know we are often people with doubts. We doubt that love can grow again in relationships where anger and bitterness reign supreme. You know the strength of love and the power of prayer. Help us to be faithful in your kind of love. Lord, you know we doubt that peace can come to our communities, our nation, our world, where hatred and racism reign supreme. You know that peace is growing there too. Help us to be faithful peacemakers. We doubt that the hungry can be fed, where despair and hopelessness reign supreme. You know that there is enough food in the world Lord, help us to be generous. Lord of miracles, you specialize in impossibilities. You walked on water, you heal the nations, you forgive sins, you set captives free. You set us free for love in this world. This morning, Lord, we pray for all people who may be filled with doubts, who wonder whether you exist and whether you are listening who wonder what this world, whole community is about. Lord, we pray for people who doubt the purpose of life, who wonder whether to end it all, who face feelings of meaninglessness and despair. 
even when we have that sinking feeling, give us wisdom to turn to you. Gracious Lord, help us to trust you with both our belief and our unbelief. Give us faith so that we can be your faithful people, believing in your power to save, believing in your power to reign supreme, believing that we can share this good news with everyone we meet. And in so doing, may we experience your joy, even in the midst of doubt. Lord God, we offer these prayers to you. We trust that you hear each and every one of them. And then we offer to you this prayer that your Son first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now these words of blessing. Go now, trusting in God's promises for you and for all people, promises of peace, security, blessing, Promises are made to you even when they are difficult to believe. May you know that this good news comes from God and it is nourishing and true. And so we go in the joy and the promise of a good and gracious God. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.